Hello, uh, let me do a quick class overview for you so that you know what to expect throughout the summer. And even though it's only a six week course, which seems really short, we are gonna get a lot of stuff done, but I want you to be super prepared so that you know exactly what to expect and what I'm gonna be expecting from this. So let me just jump over and share my screen with you so you can see this is the course and um, it's it's a pretty dialed in course. I've taught this multiple times before. It's not like my first rodeo here. And I think that what you're going to be able to experience in here is a well-organized course, but there is a lot of work. And there are some pretty tight deadlines. And I just want you to be going in eyes wide open of what's going to happen. Now, there are several different types of assignments that you're going to have to do in this class. The first one is a discussion post. Each week you're going to have two discussion posts, two discussion posts to cover. Um, and that's because we're going to be covering multiple chapters. Now I've removed some of them from my normal class because I just don't think we have time to go through and do all of it. But I do think it's important that we participate and we have a lively discussion. Now these discussion posts are supposed to be slightly controversial or slightly um, prone to having different opinions. And that's what we want. There are no wrong answers in this class. This is all a theoretical construct that we're going to be going through. But I do want you to see that these are format of choice. Now, when I say format of choice, a lot of people will get confused at this right away. So I want to make sure you're very clear on that. That means if you want to respond with a you know, three paragraph response explaining your thing, that's fine. That's great. You can do that. Uh, if you want to record a video and explain your thoughts, that's really great. I think that's fantastic because we can all watch it and interact with it. If you want to make an infographic, that's great. If you want to do a podcast type of thing where you just put up an audio thing, whatever format you want to respond in, that is perfect. Now, what I'm looking for is substance, not for, uh, you know, I'm not looking for fluff either. I want substance. So if you can get in and make your point in a podcast in a minute, it better be a good minute. Uh, that's great. If you need two or three minutes, that's, that's fantastic. I don't think you need to be doing a 10 minute video every week. All right. So try to keep it to no more than about four minutes of video, but four minutes of video is about four pages of typing. So, you know, take your pick, do what you want. Uh, I had some incredible infographics last semester, people that really spent some time just kind of putting their thoughts and responses down that way. So that's the format of choice. You can do that on whatever you'd like and whichever way you'd like to do that, I guess, is the, the way I want to say that. You are going to have one paper due, and I believe it is due in week two um, on maybe week three. Sorry. Um, we'll pull it up here in a second. But in week three, you have a paper due, and it's about subcultures and TV. Yeah, so I believe it's week three. And on that assignment, you're supposed to watch some TV, follow the prompts. But let me just explain to you what I'm expecting in a paper. I, uh, I think you've probably already watched a video. I'm a director of marketing over at doTERRA. You're not going to sit here and tell me something in this book that I haven't already read. I've read this book multiple times. I do this for a daily living. What I'm looking for is how you take what you've learned and the assignment that you were given and how do you meld them together. Don't just explain to me what's in the book. I know that information. You could say though that like based on the VALS framework, which you'll learn about, based on the VALS framework, I would say that the audience that the commercials are trying to attract in TV are X, Y, and Z and, and dissect it down and give me why you think that's a good idea. So I'm not looking for superfluous regurgitation of the book. You are now probably a junior or a senior here at UVU. You're getting ready to jump out into the marketing world. I'm expecting some good quality content from you so that I can see that you're actually able to apply the principles that we're talking about in class. That's what this is all about is can I take it and use it in my day-to-day -day operations as a marketer? And I promise you if, the, if you take the time and you do these assignments, I'm not just trying to give you busy work. I'm trying to give you tools that, for, that will for the rest of your life serve you well as a marketer. Okay, so I do this all the time. <clears throat> uh, so each week you will be given a reading assignment and it will tell you, oh, you need to get into the book and read chapter one. Uh, I will have embedded in here your ebook so you can click to, to register for Connect. It's in McGraw Hill Connect. The ebook is in there. It's a fantastic book. I would like to address the book really quickly with you. So the book is actually an older version. And when I first came here to UVU two years ago, they asked me if I wanted to update the book. And I said, you know, I'll try it based on what's there. 
And I actually prepped this entire class uh, a couple semesters ago with the new version of the text. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, because this, this book talks about TiVos and DVDs and things like that instead of streaming and Disney Plus. And I like that. I think it's great because it helps us remove ourselves from the actual item. So if I was to ask you how to market an Apple Watch, you'd be like, oh, this is the thing about the Apple Watch. Whereas if I was to ask you how would you market a Rolex or something, like it takes you away from the current spot and you have to be thinking about marketing. So I've actually opted to keep the old version of the book because I think it actually serves us better to learn the principles. We can always adapt them to something new, but marketing principles are universal and they're timeless. Now there's new things that come up and we'll talk about those, but it, it doesn't mean that we need to be held to the, like it doesn't have to be a current item that we're talking about. People were marketing things in the 1800s and the 200s and the you know BC 5000, people were marketing at those times. We just have a lot more understanding of what it is right now. So I love this book and I want you to, I want you to hold on to it. Um, and talking about the book just for one second, um, I love this class because this class really ties in the best parts of learning in this book and puts them into real world situations. And hopefully these assignments are going to help you feel like you're learning and you're becoming a better marketer. And I love that because as a marketer, I do this every day. I use these same principles here at doTERRA to get people to buy products, to help people see how to change their lives, to do things that are all in the marketing sphere. So this consumer behavior thing, I am super passionate about it. I love it. It is what makes people tick. I think this is one of the greatest subjects on the planet, and I'm so happy that I get to teach it. So let me keep going here a little bit. So you'll have a discussion. That's that uh, format of choice discussion. And then you'll have a quiz. Now, every time you have a quiz, you get three attempts. I mean, come on, I'm being pretty nice to you here. You get three attempts. You don't get to see the correct answers. It scrambles the questions anyway. I have a massive question pool. It's all based on the book, okay? I'm not trying to trick you on any of the questions. None of the questions are designed to be a trick. They're supposed to be the information that you've received that week. Now, this is kind of the regurgitation point of the class, trying to see if you went through. Now, I will tell you, if you do not read this book, shame on you, okay? I have literally read it two and a half times, all the way through. It is a phenomenal book. It has so many good principles in it, all right? I'm teaching the class and I'm reading it because it's that good. And, and so I would tell you that that's probably one of the greatest things that you can do is get that information. Now, this quiz will talk to you about um, what happened in chapter one. And it's just an overview of the principles. It's open book, it's open note, you can, you can go through and do it. You get three attempts, okay? It shouldn't be hard. But you do have multiple quizzes per week. Um, and those quizzes all get you ready for the exam. If it's on a quiz, it can be on an exam, all right? And here's my other promise. I won't ask you a question that you can't find in the book, okay? I'm not gonna say, oh, in my lecture I said X, and you should remember it. That's not gonna be the way I test. It's all in the book, so you should be able to locate it and be able to have the answer. Okay, um, the next piece that I want to talk about here is our team um, team assignment. And so you are going to have a group assignment. Yay! I know everybody just loves group assignments and it's so wonderful. I have pre-assigned you into your groups. You should already be able to get in there. In fact, your first assignment uh, for MP1 was to, yeah, team selection here. I've already selected, so you just have to email me a list or actually submit a list of who it is and their phone numbers and email addresses so I know that you've been able to connect. And I've explained that in that assignment. But this team assignment is essentially a way to take what we're learning and apply it to a company. Now, you'd be like, oh, Mr. Greer, uh, Dr. Greer here, what's going on here? I mean, this is pretty intense. I've got to apply this. What kind of company do I pick? Do I need to go see him and interview him in person? Like, all these questions start coming up. Shellax, okay, we're going to be okay. You can choose any company in the world, but they have to be a real company. And you're going to identify a marketing problem they have. And that you're going to have all that explanation in that assignment. I don't have to go through that. But I want you to know that the point of this assignment is to work together as a group to come up with some marketing artifacts. And then you're going to present them at the end of the semester. And then we're all going to comment on it. And then you're going to write a reflective essay. 
but you're going to go through kind of the basic general concept that someone would if you were having a problem. You're going to identify the problem. You're going to say, okay, what are my strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats? What do I think would help move this needle? And then we're going to go forward and do that. And you're going to do that as a group. And so you need to make sure that you and your group have time to get together. I know everybody now knows how to use Zoom. <laughs> everybody knows how to use Microsoft Teams at this point. You should all be pros at that. We've been quarantined long enough. And so you're able to do that and you just need to get together and meet. So that, that project comes up. Now you have one of those every week as part of your group assignment. Okay, And so you just need to be ready to say that I need to get together with my group and we need to submit the paper that has to do with that. Um, the next thing that you will have, let me just see here, is... So we've done quizzes, we've done exam. Oh, exams. So you're going to have exams come up. Now the exams will cover the previous chapters. Now when you see these exams, what you need to make sure you do is realize that that is not covering the stuff that we're going to be covering that week. So I've actually made the exams due earlier in the week because what happens is I've seen that people tend to push that off too long and when they push that off too long then they've already started going to the next week and they're forgetting the information. So these are timed exams. You get one attempt at it and you are doing it on your computer there because it's an online course and so there's a little bit of pressure. There's usually about 30 to 40 questions in an exam and it covers the previous chapters that we've done. There's, it's not comprehensive, it's not going to go back if we do the first three chapters, it's not going to go back to chapters one through six on the second one, so the second exam will be four, five, and six, or whatever those chapters are. So that's what you're looking for in there. Now I just want to make sure you have that information. Now you've seen all the different things that are going to be going on in this class. And, and one of the beautiful things about that is now you kind of have a vision of what is going on. And that's what I want to make sure you have. I want you to go into this being successful, knowing that you can be prepared. And prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> that's a saying I learned from the Marines down in San Diego that used to come to my school. So it's the seven P's. So you should be planned out that each week you're going to have to spend some time before Tuesday of each week to get a discussion post done. Two of them actually. You're going to need to spend time on the exam weeks to know that your exam needs to be done probably by Wednesday so you don't get too far into the new chapters. <clears throat> then you're going to have your team assignment. So there's a lot of work in here, but the good news is you're going to get it all over with in like six and a half weeks. And I am so excited for you to do that because I know how long classes can take. I've gone through a doctorate program and I know that school can get long. But you are so close to being at the end right now. This is the time to just focus in. Anybody that's taking summer school, so I know you're a rock star because you're trying to get done. And I want to help you do that. Okay, so if you need me for anything, please just text me. I've put my phone number in the in the course. Just text me. It's okay. Don't text me after like midnight, but I'm usually up till midnight. I usually get up around seven. Like if you text me and I don't get back to you, I'm a you know, I'm doing something here at work. So I will text you as soon as I get an opportunity to. And that's probably the best way to get a hold of me because I'm a little bit busy. All right. So if you need help with something or you're trying to figure it out, just text me really quick and I'll fire a text right back to you as soon as I can. And if we need to talk, we can get on the phone. I'm always open to you. Um, I love to tell my students that you've got, you've paid tuition and you have free tutoring from the director of marketing at doTERRA. Like this is a pretty good deal. Okay. <laughs> Not only going to learn a bunch of stuff, but if you need to ask me a question about work, whatever, like as long as we're okay, like we, I, I have a lot of stuff going on, but as long as I can set aside some time, I spend lots of time with students because I love this stuff and I love helping people like you succeed. All right, so I can't wait to get this going. This is the course overview, and I hopefully have enough videos. If there's something that's not clear, text me. I can record a video. We can get on a phone call, whatever it is. And I am so excited to do this with you this summer. I will talk to you later, and I can't wait to see you in this class.